So I've been extremely happy with my MX Master 3S mouse as my daily driver, but my upgrade-itis kicked in and I had to know, is this mouse still the best one for me? Or is there something better out there that might boost my workflow or accuracy? I've been collecting mice and today I'm putting the MX Master 3S up against some challengers in the ultimate showdown to see who comes out on top. To most people, a mouse is just a mouse, but for me and probably you, it's an extension of the body. It's a tool I rely on to work, create, and pwn noobs. I use it every day and I think it's worth investing in. Before we dive in, here's a quick crash course on grips so we're speaking the same language. There's the one, two, two grip, one thumb on the side, two up on top, two on the other side. Then there's the one, three, one, where psychopaths keep their middle finger on the scroll wheel and right click with their ring finger. Usually gamers, but hey, some people work that way too. And then there's also the claw versus palm grip. Claw is more fingertip focused, palm is more relaxed and productivity friendly. Personally, I use a palm one, two, two grip and that's how I'll be judging these mice, but I'll test for the other grips too. So no matter how you hold your mouse, you'll get recommendations. And sadly, I wasn't able to get every mouse I wanted. Some of the higher end, Logitech and Corsair models and even the final mouse just weren't in the budget this time, but the lineup here covers a lot of the most popular options you're likely considering and maybe a couple you haven't even heard of before. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which type of mouse is right for you, so let's jump in. This is the Logitech MX Master 3S. It's been the productivity champ for a while thanks to its amazing hand feel, premium textures, quiet but satisfying clicks, and thoughtful scroll wheels. The four should be here soon, but for now, this is still the top dog. It sells for $139 on Logitech's site. However, you often find it for sale on Amazon for 99 bucks. Either way, it's not cheap. For a Palm 122 grip though, this thing feels good. The machined steel scrolls feel high end. The side back and forward buttons feel nice, though they're not as quiet click-wise as the primary buttons, and the battery lasts forever. It has great software and even has some extra buttons and features I don't really use. Interestingly, some of my favorite features about this mouse are surprisingly divisive. Quiet clicks, for example, I love them. They literally saved my marriage when I was gaming in bed on my laptop, but some people prefer louder clicky confirmation. Plus the weight is another thing at 141 grams is hefty, which I like for precise Photoshop cuts. Moving it almost feels like moving a curling stone, but for gamers who flick around a lot, they might not like the weight. Where it really falls behind nowadays though is the polling rate. It's just 125 hertz. That means it sends data to your computer 125 times per second, compared to 1000 hertz or even 8000 hertz on some of the gaming mice. If you're a Twitch gamer, that's a problem. For me though, I've gamed on this plenty, and I've never really noticed it until I compared it directly to faster mice. It still feels smooth and accurate enough for most non-ultra competitive games. The grip material is premium, but for people with sweaty palms, it can turn sticky over time. I haven't had that issue yet, but it's something to keep in mind if you have sweaty palms. The thumb scroll is fantastic for video editing, and while you can use a claw grip on this mouse, it doesn't feel great because of the weight. For palm or even 131 grips, though, it works well. Great mouse. Not perfect. FYI, most of these mice can be paired with multiple computers, usually over Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Bluetooth is fine for office work, but is usually capped at 125 hertz polling. So if you care about speed and precision, go with the wireless 2.4 gigahertz for sure. Just know that it does use more battery. Plus DPI or dots per inch is another thing you'll hear with mice. It's how far the mouse cursor moves for every inch the mouse moves. The MX Master 3S, for example, goes up to 8,000 DPI, which seems more than enough for productivity on a 4K monitor, but it's quite low compared to the other mice as you'll see in a moment. Let's move on. This is the Keychron M6. It's a little beast at $49. Sorry, I got the pricing wrong on the Keychron. Check it out. On their website, this is the US website. It says $39.99, but when you click on it, it actually costs $69.99. Similar with the Canadian one, it says $58, but when you click on it, it says $72. It's still a jam-packed mouse for the prices you'll see, but I just wanted to update the actual pricing. It weighs only 78 grams, comes with a 30,000 DPI sensor and an insane 8,000 Hertz polling rate. Compared to the 125 Hertz of the 3S, that's just wild. It has a solid scroll wheel with 40 side clicks and infinite scroll, plus a thumb scroll. Nice. I'll be honest, the thumb scroll doesn't feel as nice as the Logitech's, but it's there. The clicks are quieter, but not silent.
and the plastic finish feels smooth and durable. Feature-wise, it's ridiculous for the price. Light enough for a claw grip, ergonomic enough for palm with its high hump, but for me, it feels small. I'm average size, 5'10", 180 pounds, medium to large gloves, and this mouse feels like it drops too fast from the hump to the front. Almost like a forced claw grip, my daughter loves it though. It fits her hand and she's 11. All right, you only had to pick one. Which one's it gonna be? This one for me. I'm gonna have to pick this one. The click sound is a bit hollow too. Overall, I'm blown away by what you get here, but the shape just doesn't fit my hand. I think if you have smaller hands, this might be an amazing buy. Next up is the Rapu MT760 Pro at $69. It weighs 110 grams, supports up to seven devices, and even has wireless charging. Its sensor hits 12,000 DPI with a 2000 Hertz polling rate, which again, crushes the MX Master for gaming. Instead of a scroll toggle mode, the button under the wheel changes the DPI, which is actually pretty handy. Basically, that means you can change your mouse sensitivity on the fly when you're switching between programs or games. The thumb scroll is massive compared to the Keychron, and I, I don't love the placement. Sometimes I feel it with my index finger depending on my grip. It's quite comfortable overall though, more plasticky than the Logitech, but not cheap feeling. The clicks aren't super consistent though. Right click feels soft, but the left click has a springy sound. This mouse doesn't blow me away in any one category, but it's solid across the board. A good jack of all trades pick, especially for bigger hands. It's a palm grip mouse for sure, but since it's not super heavy, you could claw grip game on this thing too. It's decent and I bet it goes on sale pretty good. Now. This is the Envision Lingbao M9. It's $39.99, only weighs 48 grams and has a hot swappable battery. This one's all about being ultra light. No side scroll, no fancy features, just stripped down for speed. That's why it weighs only 48 grams. Feels like it's empty inside, it's wild. It's designed as a claw grip mouse through and through though, with the same 30K DPI and 8K polling rates on the Keychron, but it feels decent in a palm grip on a slight angle too. Honestly, it's a blazing Razer Viper knockoff, but at a fraction of the price. Will it last five years though? I can't say. There's usually a reason why these things are cheaper, right? But it does come with a one year warranty, so maybe it'll last. The point is, with this mouse, if you want speed on a budget, it delivers. And those clicks, loud enough that everyone in the house will know you're gaming. The reason I included this mouse is because I think some people hear the word gaming mice and assume it's not for them, but the weight of this mouse is absolutely wild. Again, it feels like there's nothing inside and some might not realize they want a light mouse, but maybe you do lightning fast video editing like I do and the sensor and weight on this might actually help you get more done than a productivity mouse. Just something to think about. I love I like this one because too. the clicks in so light and you can use both hands if you want. Symmetrical one, yeah. So that's fine. Slowing it down, let's talk about the Logitech M650. Normally it's $59, but I got it for $39 on Amazon where it often sits. I originally bought it for the quiet clicks and loved it enough to grab the larger version too. It's comfortable, but the ergonomic shape isn't my favorite for my pinky and ring finger with my 122 grip. Still, it's the ultimate value office mouse. This is just, it's great for parents or grandparents or anyone who just simply wants something that works. It's not a gamer's mouse, it's 4,000 DPI, which is the lowest out of all the mice, 125 Hertz polling. But honestly, you can still play games on it just fine. I played through Path of Exile 2 on it and it was great. This one uses one AA battery instead of recharging like the rest of them, but Logitech claims it lasts up to two years. Honestly, I don't hate that. And I discovered something funny. When I use a mouse lying down in bed, the smaller M650 actually feels the most comfortable out of all of these mice. So now this is my bed mouse. Look, Logitech's quiet clicks are my favorite out of any brand. And this mouse is the cheapest offering to get that feature. This is another symmetrical mouse like the M9. So it's not ergonomic, which means you can use it either as a claw grip or a palm grip. I think it's just great. All right. Razor time. This is the ProClick V2. It's $144.99. It's Razor's attempt at a productivity slash gaming hybrid. Right away, it feels big in my hand, and FYI, it weighs 110 grams. Unlike the MX Master's rubber texture on the palm, this feels plastic. It's slippery at first, but it gets grippier 
as you use it once your skin oils get on it, which is good. It doesn't have a thumb scroll either, but the main scroll has side clicks and a tactile and infinite toggle, which I really like. It forces a palm grip because of its size, which I don't mind. Honestly, this might fit my hand the best out of every mouse. However, it's just a little too big for my hand. It's so close, but I wish it was just a bit smaller. The clicks are loud too especially after the Logitech mice, but it's a satisfying click. Where it shines though is precision. The 30,000 DPI sensor and 1000 Hertz polling rate feel amazing for fast editing work. And obviously it just games phenomenal. The razor you like one? the big razor one? I love the scroll on it. Scroll is the best on that one? Yeah. And of course it has the Razer RGB in there, which sparks joy. Honestly, I didn't expect to enjoy the RGB feature as much as I did, but it just makes my desk look slick. And I like that especially at night. And lastly, the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro 35K. It's $159.99 normally. It weighs 112 grams. And honestly, this mouse is incredible. It's not perfect, but it might dethrone the MX Master 3S as my daily driver. Let's get into it. It has injection molded rubber grips on the sides, a textured plastic top that isn't slippery, which is nice, and gorgeous RGB, not only on the bottom, but also in the scroll wheel and in the logo is so slick. Plus the ergonomics are fantastic. The buttons flare just right, fitting my 122 palm grip beautifully. The scroll wheel feels premium and can switch between tactile and infinite scroll, and it has the 4D side clicks. I thought I'd miss the MX Master's thumb scroll, but the side clicks here on the mouse scroll wheel do the same job for video editing, so I'm okay that that's missing. Specs wise, it's loaded to 30K DPI up to 8K polling rate, DPI switch button, side buttons, and even a sensitivity clutch. Check this out. By default, this button slows down your cursor for precise movements. Perfect for gaming snipers, but also for me, super useful in Photoshop. Razer software also lets you customize the crap out of this thing, and it even supports wireless charging with Razer's dock too, which is very cool. The clicks are loud but satisfying and somehow slightly less annoying than the pro clicks. Maybe not, maybe they're both the same. Oh, and quick honorable mention, my wife's Logitech Lift. Vertical mice are great for wrist and elbow pain, but for me, it feels clumsy and ham-fisted. She loves it though, and I get why. If you're struggling with pain, it could be a game changer, but in my opinion, it's not the most precise mouse for what I do. Honestly though, maybe it is once you get used to it. I've just never gotten used to it. So which is the best mouse and which one should you buy? Let's be honest, there's no perfect mouse for everything. You have to decide on what's important for you. For pure productivity, especially in an office environment, the MX Master 3S is still a safe choice. Comfortable, great quiet clicks, amazing scroll wheels, and insane battery life. Plus, you can often get it on sale. The MX Master 4, which should be coming out very soon, will probably improve it further, but it won't be cheap. For the best all-rounder, the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro is my pick. It looks just incredible, feels great, has the best feature set, and performs at a level that works both for gaming and productivity at the highest level. If you work from home and do some gaming, this mouse has you fully covered. It's not cheap, but geez, you can really tell Razer has put a lot of work into this mouse. For value, the Keychron M6 and Rapu MT760 Pro are strong contenders depending on the size of your hand. The M6 is great for small hands and the Rapu for larger hands. I prefer my MX Master to both of these. However, both of these dumpster all over the 3S's sensor. So for gaming, these will both be way more accurate. The Envision Lingbao M9 is crazy light and fun if you just want speed on a budget. I think this mouse, or the more expensive versions being the Razer Viper or Logitech Light Speeds, actually might be amazing mice for productivity people who work fast and like having a light mouse. Maybe you've never considered a gaming mouse for your software, but I'm telling you, I can zip around so fast while video editing with this mouse. I never thought of using it as my daily mouse, but it's really interesting. You can tell it's built for speedy claw grips, but you can palm grip it too. The Logitech M650 and the large one, which fits normal sized hands and then the small one, it's a quiet, simple office champ. The small one is actually my go-to for my MacBook Pro. It's the one out of all of these I like to use, especially when I'm laying down. And the Razer ProClick V2, it's really worth a look, I think, if you have bigger hands and you value gaming over productivity. It has beautiful RGB, and it just feels like it'll last for years. I would say this is more of a palm grip gaming mouse, though. 
it's a good mouse, just not for me. If I could design my perfect mouse, it would be the Basilisk with Logitech's quiet clicks and a slightly bigger hump, roughly where the logo is, a thumb scroll, and the light weight of the Envision. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. For right now though, the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro is good enough to dethrone the reigning MX Master 3S as my daily driver. I have made the switch. With this mouse, I can edit videos at blazing speeds, use the clutch to help with precision while photo editing, gaming feels amazing on it, and I just love seeing this mouse every time the RGB comes to life. Good job, Razer. Regardless of your grip, the Basilisk is really something special. So what do you think? Have you tried any of these mice? Which ones are you most curious about after watching this video? And what grip do you use? Palm or claw, something else? Drop it in the comments below. I think it'd be interesting to see what everyone is using. And let me know what mouse you love. I really wish I could have included the Logitech gaming mice and maybe even some of the Corsair ones. I'll link the best deals I can find for each mouse in the description and pinned comment below. And remember, don't be afraid to use the return policy. Everyone has different sized hands and different needs. The best mouse for me might not be the best mouse for you, so keep that in mind. Don't settle, you will use this for years, get the right one. As always, thanks for watching. Please thumbs up if you enjoyed this and subscribe if you want more. And stay tuned because I've been collecting low profile wireless keyboards too. That video is coming soon. I'll link it here when it's ready. And in the meantime, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. See you next time on Upgrade Itis.